Welcome to this new video and welcome to the second episode of the Abath Pocket Rocket. As already promised in this episode, we are going to develop the Abath significantly. However, before going on to work on it together, I wanted to explain a couple of things about the turbines that are mounted on the various Abaths and a little thing that you didn't quite understand in the first episode. So, on the Abath, as I told you, I have the IHI turbine, a turbine which in any case already has 160 horsepower and enough thrust. So with a map, for example, you can't increase it too much, but you can certainly improve the output and have much more torque. If I had had a Garrett 1446, which is the one they mounted at the time when I bought mine only for two-seater competition, but which they now also mount on the new touring cars, we would certainly have been able to push it quite a bit. And in fact, perhaps in the future, I will think about replacing the current IHI with the 1446, but let's start pushing the IHI, and that's what we'll do today. Just one thing you didn't quite understand in the first episode when you saw that I put the filter in, that filter has nothing to do with the suction. Many of you said, but the direct suction and the open filter has nothing to do with it. Nothing. On the Abarth, I have the original Turismo filter, which is a BM MC panel filter that was fitted on the Turismo. That little filter there is only used, as I explained, to vent the pop-off. This means that I could not have put the filter there, but it is put there to prevent any debris from falling in. So in reality, it doesn't suck anything in from there. It just vents. Nothing changes. So let's go and modify the A-bath, because today what we will do is remove the catalytic converter and map with... I'll tell you later. Let's go. we've finally arrived in Turin at old school. The garage time has come to see the work that will be done precisely on my 595. Hoping it doesn't explode obviously. Ricardo is also there. Representative of old school garage, 335 horsepower. This is why we clocked a better 0 to 100 time in the first episode compared to an original 595 Turismo. In fact, we have 166 horsepower and 265 newton meters against the original 160 horsepower and 230 newton meters. I'm not sure these minor differences in power justify the nearly half a second saved on the 0 to 100. In any case, I'm happy that it is more powerful and faster than stated, albeit slightly. And now it's 
it's time to get our hands on it. Scat and map. the new catalyst that isn't a catalyst. <laughs> Very well, as you can see, the catalytic converter has been removed, the car has been mapped, and after several maps, we are going to see the final result. a small turbine has produced an excellent result. Not so much in horsepower as this is more or less the maximum it can produce, but the torque is impressive. I wonder what we could achieve with a 1446? Perhaps we will find out. Anyway, I didn't request a simple map because Christian doesn't provide predetermined maps. He's more like a tailor. Whatever you request from him, he does by customizing it to fit you. So, in a word, it's a remarkable performance. I want to greet the Turin fans who came out in such numbers that day. I don't even know how they found me. Maybe I had posted some stories, then the word must have spread. There were so many of you who saw the modifications live on the Abarth, and you also made some videos which you then sent me, so I decided to include them in this video to thank you for coming to visit me, and because they are still amateur videos, and therefore they fit. Let's go see them. <laughs> Let's compare the two rolls here. We started with 166 horsepower at 5,200 revolutions per minute and 265 newton meters at just under 3,000 revolutions per minute. To reach 178 horsepower again at 5,200 revolutions per minute and 326 newton meters at around 3,000 revolutions per minute, we maintained about the same curve but with more power and much more torque. Good job. The limiter has also been raised to 7,000 revolutions per minute. We don't know 0 to 100 nor 60 to 130, but during this episode we will find out. was done on this Sabarth. We have a tune that includes launch control and a bang. The cool thing about the bang is that it's pedal operated. So that means it's only activated when I want it to be. 
Now I'll show you the launch first. It settles at around 3000 RPM and activates. You'll probably see the pedal bang go into the red and then what I call the big bump. Alright guys, we are on board the Abarth. After going through the map, I have just shown you everything that can be done now. We have Tommy here with us. So first of all, we didn't mention one thing that when we switch to sport, there's no more bang and all the fun, but the car just goes faster. So now if I do this and then touch the pedal. I'll make you feel that Tommy goes faster. This catalytic converter is a bit emptier at the bottom, but you can pull it much further. Of course, you don't pull it like a naturally aspirated one, but for a turbo, I must say that even having a small turbine, it pushes well, even at the top. Obviously, if we had a 1446 or a TD04, the car would push much more. We remove the control, and if we start in first gear, for example, from here, we also switch to sport, so you can feel how it's going. Dear friends, here we are finally to test the Abarth with a fresh 0 to 100 and of course 60 to 130. The same test we conducted in the first episode. Let's see how it performs now after the modifications. I hope I've managed to shave off at least half a second. So from the 7 seconds of last time, which was already an excellent result because Abarth claims 7.4 seconds, I would be thrilled to bring it down to at least 6.5. Like last time, I relied on an app that measures performance via GPS during the test. An app I compared with the car's speedometer in the first episode and found the results were practically identical. This time the app gave me some issues, it was having trouble connecting to the GPS and it was giving me inaccurate results. We then look at the results via the speedometer which I reiterate we had fortunately verified to be identical to the GPS. Fantastic! After these results, I couldn't be happier. The first step has been taken. We have achieved much better performance and now the little 595 is much more fun to use. Thanks Christian and thanks to all the guys at Old School Garage who worked to achieve these first results. Well, now it's time to raise the rating regarding the engine. My rating for the engine is now 7.8. The extra power can be felt but the torque has really changed the driving experience. The drivability remained unchanged with the rating of 7.5. However, the overall experience has improved. Now, it's practically impossible not to laugh while driving it. 
The previous rating was already high, 9 out of 10, but I would raise it a little more. I'd say it's now 9.3. The final score on average of the three previous votes is 8.2. The Pocket Rocket project begins to take shape. Can you guess what the next step will be? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.